Welcome to Astrocast.tv, your source for news and information about astronomy and our solar system. Now, here are your hosts, NASA JPL Solar System Ambassadors, Greg Redfern and Dr. Lori Figge. It's episode nine, and in this episode, I'll be talking about STS-126 and the expansion of the International Space Station. Also, Hubble Space Telescope is back in business, and Dr. Geller will be answering another question about astronomy. 132 participating countries will host astronomy activities for people of all ages, interests, and cultures as January 2009 kicks off the International Year of Astronomy. And Katie Moore will be telling us about the December night sky. But first, some headlines. Last month, nations around the world joined together to mark a milestone in space exploration, celebrating the 10th birthday of a unique research laboratory, the International Space Station. Now, the largest spacecraft ever built, the orbital assembly of the space station began with the launch from Kazakhstan of its first bus sides component, Zarya, on November 20th, 1998. Ten years later, its interior volume is more than 25,000 cubic feet, comparable to the size of a five-bedroom house. A historic event took place at European Space Agency sites across Europe last November 14th. The flag of the Czech Republic was hoisted alongside those of ESA's other member states, officially symbolizing the country becoming ESA's 18th member state. Three, two, one, booster ignition, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Endeavour, preparing our home in space for a larger international family. Space Shuttle Endeavour lifted off on November 14 with seven astronauts for a mission to expand the International Space Station, or ISS. During the 15-day four spacewalk mission, the crew will move more than 14,000 pounds of supplies and hardware into the habitable spaces aboard ISS. This is the largest single transfer to date. A primary mission objective is to service the port and starboard Solar Alpha Rotary Joints, or SARGE. These joints are critical to the functioning of the solar arrays which provide the station power. The joints allow the massive solar panels of the ISS to track the sun and receive the maximum amount of sunlight and therefore power. To get all this equipment up to orbit and installed in the station, the shuttle uses three very unique moving vans named for famous figures in Italian history. Painters Leonardo and Raffaello, and sculptor Donatello. In NASA jargon, the Multi-Purpose Logistics Module, or MPLM, are pressurized cargo containers built in a joint venture between NASA and the Italian Space Agency. Leonardo is flying on STS-126. Leonardo was moved out of Endeavour's cargo bay and attached to the station for transfer of supplies and hardware. It will then be filled with trash and items for return to Earth. We are only one month away from the worldwide kickoff of the International Year of Astronomy, or IYA. 2009 commemorates the 400th anniversary of Galileo studying the skies with a telescope, and throughout the year, 132 participating countries will host astronomy activities for people of all ages, interests, and cultures. One of the main goals of IYA 2009 is to promote widespread access to new scientific knowledge and enable observing experiences for everyone, especially those who have never peered through a telescope before. The cornerstone projects for the year range from 100 hours of round-the-clock, round-the-globe observing to a traveling art gallery exhibit of the cosmos set to music. Well, the Galileo scope is intended to be a very high quality, very low cost telescope that can be produced in large numbers so that many, many people, especially children, can have a Galilean experience during the IYA 2009 and be able to see the mountains and craters on the moon and the rings of Saturn and the moons of Jupiter. This will allow millions of people, adults and children alike, to look at the sky with their very own Galileo scope and imagine their own constellations and create stories that go with them. The plan is to have uh, hundreds of thousands of these telescopes uh, being sold and otherwise distributed throughout the International Year of Astronomy so that millions of people will have a chance to look through them. And it will have uh, a glass main lens in the front and plastic eyepiece lenses and be made of plastic and it will be manufactured in kit form so that people can put it together and actually see how a telescope works. IYA efforts will train teachers how to bring astronomy into the classroom in new and exciting ways, as well as promote gender equality.
me. IYA 2009 aims to connect all of us under the same vast sky. Will the sun subsume the earth? <laughs> well, Beth, that's a good question. In fact, that question is addressed in the book that I was just reading here. You don't have to worry about what the sun's going to do for the next seven billion years. It'll remain pretty much the way it is right now. At that time, it will run out of hydrogen in the core, and it'll go through a life cycle stage where it will expand. As a red giant star, our sun will have a diameter of about 1 AU. That's the average distance from the Earth to the sun. At that time, with the sun at the center of our solar system, the edge of the sun will actually be very close to Venus. Nonetheless, by that time, all the oceans on this planet will have boiled off and will just be a cinder of a rock. But again, don't worry about it for the next seven billion years. You'll be fine. As can be seen in this remarkable image of two gravitationally interacting galaxies, Hubble Space Telescope is back online and making observations. As we reported in our last episode, HST went offline due to hardware problems, which also caused the delay of servicing Mission 4, which is now set for launch sometime in early 2009. Hubble scientists are preparing to undertake a full schedule of HST observations. <laughs> recently imaged with the Hubble Space Telescope to take the first visible light image of a planet around another star. December evenings are a great time to view the star from a hut. All you have to do is go outside and look due south just after the sky gets dark. From a hut will be the bright first magnitude star there. That's about as bright as Betelgeuse in the constellation Orion, or about twice as bright as the North Star Polaris. Astronomy's magnitude scale actually harkens back to the ancient Greek times, a couple of hundred years B.C. Fomalhaut's height above the horizon will vary depending on the latitude of your viewing location. In Washington, D.C., and other locations with the same latitude, it will be about 20 degrees above the horizon. For viewers farther south, it will be higher in the sky. Fomalhaut is so bright because it's relatively close to Earth, about 25 light years away. Astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope found the planet because over the 21 months between the images they took, the planet moved in its orbit around the star. Some events sponsored by the International Year of Astronomy have already begun. The World at Night Project, or TWAN, got a head start in India in October and plans to visit many more international locations throughout 2009. Tuan presents a collection of photographs of the world's most beautiful and historic sites against a nighttime backdrop of stars and planets in an accessible and understandable manner to all, and uniting us under one sky. Check out their website at www.tuannight.org. Ringing in the New Year astronomy style, the South African Astronomical Observatory will be open all night to the public on New Year's Eve to encourage and enhance people's participation in astronomy. The nearby town of Sutherland has planned a week-long festival to celebrate the occasion. If you are wondering how and when to participate in an IYA 2009 event in your area, visit the U.S. event calendar linked from my blog site, or you can also visit the IYA homepage also linked from my blog site. For all of us here at AstroCast.TV, I'm Greg Redfern. And I'm Lori Figge. Tune in next time as we learn more about the wonders and mysteries of the universe in which we live and explore.